Here we're going to be studying kinematics. Kinematics is a study of an analysis of the motion of, an, of a moving object. Um, you may be familiar with the prefix for the word kinematics, kina. You've seen it before in the terms kinetic energy, which is the study of the energy of a moving object. Um, you may have heard of the term kinesthetics which deals with the sensation or the, the movement of your body. Um, you may even recognize this, but in a different form. Instead of it sp being spelled kine, K-I-N-E, there's another hybrid of that, which is cine, like the cinema. When you go to the movies, what are you watching? You're watching moving pictures. Now, when we're studying kinematics, or even physics for that matter, there are going to be two very important quantities that you're going to have to know the difference. One is called a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity is one that can be described with magnitude only and has no direction. Whereas a vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Here's a nice little clip that will help you remember what a vector quantity is. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! Now, for whatever reason, in my career, I, I've learned that students have a tough time with the word magnitude. All you simply have to understand is that the word magnitude means the amount or the size of something. It's nothing more than that. It's just a fancy word for saying how much of a quantity there is. Um, for example, the mass of an object has a certain amount of kilograms or grams. Um, the, there's a certain amount of liters of volume. In science, we just simply use the word magnitude to represent the amount of something. Okay, we'll, we'll see more um, what is meant by the word magnitude as we go on, as we introduce more terms, which is where I want to go to next. I want to introduce um, some important terms that we're going to be using in kinematics. The first one we'll start with is one that's familiar to all people, and that's time. Um, we represent time with a lowercase t. Time is a scalar quantity. It's a quantity that has no direction associated with it. Um, for example, the class period takes 43 minutes. Um, we would never say that the class period is 43 minutes to the left or 40 minute, 43 minutes south. There is no direction specified with time. Okay, so here I've defined time as a period or duration of existence. The SI unit for time is the second. So when we measure time in science, the, the term that we often use the most is the second. Um, if time is ever measured in units other than seconds, for example in minutes or in hours or in years, a lot of times we're going to have to convert the values back into seconds. All right. Another common term that you're going to run into is distance. Okay, and distance is represented by the letter d. It is a scalar quantity. Again, no direction is associated with distance. Um, I've defined distance here as the amount of length covered by an object moving from some place of origin. A quantity very similar to distance is called displacement, and displacement is a vector quantity. Displacement is the amount of change in length from an object's original position along a straight line path. Another way of describing displacement and how it differs from distance, besides being a vector quantity, is that displacement represents how far an object is from its point of origin and in what direction it finished relative to where it started. The metric unit for both distance and displacement is the meter. 
we measure distance in science in meters. The lowercase m represents the symbol for the unit of distance or displacement. Now, to give you an example of the difference between um, distance and displacement, let's say you walked along this path from point A to point B. The total distance traveled would be the amount of length covered in walking the entire path from length A to or point A to point B. Now, different from distance travel would be the displacement. In this case, the displacement would be the straight line distance from point A to point B. And you'll notice if you started at point A and you finish at point B, the arrow that represents the vector of displacement points in a direction that is slightly down and to the right. The length of the arrow would represent the amount of displacement or the magnitude of the object's displacement. Okay, so here are some more important terms that we're going to use in kinematics. Okay, first one that we're going to talk about here is speed. Now, in physics, we use the letter lowercase v for speed. I think you'll see why in a second. Um, but it's very important that you remember that speed is a scalar quantity. Okay, speed does not have direction. Speed is defined as the rate in which distance changes in time. You'll notice I have the word distance underlined. That's because distance is a scalar quantity. Speed is, me is a measurement of distance with respect to time, change in distance with respect to time. A term that's very often confused with speed is velocity. Velocity, which uses the letter lowercase v as well, velocity is a vector quantity. And by definition, Velocity is the rate in which displacement changes with time. In other words, velocity tells you how fast you're going, which is your magnitude of speed, and the direction that you're traveling in. So the difference between speed and velocity. One is scalar, one is vector. And I'm not really sure how you're going to remember that speed is scalar and velocity is vector. That's going to be a tough one for you to remember. I'm sorry. You do have to remember, however, that both speed and velocity are measured in units of meters per second. Okay, we don't use miles per hour. In science and in physics, we use the, the units for speed and velocity as the meter per second. Okay, we've come to the time where we're now going to introduce our very first equation in physics. All right, here it comes. Bam, V bar is equal to delta D over delta T. This equation, by the way, now calculates either average speed or average velocity. It depends on what quantities that you have provided for you. But if you use this equation and, you're, and you wish to calculate average speed, then you're going to use D is going to represent distance and t will represent time. If you're using this calculation, uh, this equation, excuse me, to calculate average velocity, then d, or delta d, is going to represent displacement. Okay? So, as I said before, average speed is the, is the rate at which distance changes with time. Average velocity is the rate at which displacement changes with time. Now, the Greek letter delta is actually a mathematical operation um, and it is used to calculate the difference between a final condition and an initial condition. So for example, when I have delta d in the numerator of this equation, d, whether it's distance or displacement, would be the final distance traveled or the final displacement minus the initial distance or displacement, or we can just use the subscripts d subscript f minus d subscript i. Oftentimes though in regions physics, um, the initial condition for position and time are almost always zero. Therefore we disregard the delta symbol in the equation average speed or average velocity. The equation v bar is equal to d over t. Notice that there is no um, use of delta 
um, operations or operators simply because the distance is of initial is considered to be zero and time initial is considered to be zero. Um, notice too here that where am I? Distance may either be or D may either represent displacement or it may represent distance. Okay, if I scroll down a little bit further down here, you'll see that V with a bar over the top of it represents either average velocity or average speed. Okay, so you're required to know that if you're using the equation V bar equals D over T, if you're trying to calculate average velocity, you're going to substitute in for D displacement. If you are trying to solve for average speed, then you're going to substitute in for D, you're going to substitute in distance. T rep always represents the time interval. And finally, you need to know that your average speed, or your average velocity for that matter, does not necessarily tell you how fast you're going. All the average speed equation does is it calculates exactly what it says. It calculates an average. So, for example, if you took a test and on one test you got 100 and on another test you got a 90, your test average for those two tests would be a 95. The average speed, average velocity equation does exactly the same thing. Okay, it calculates the average of speed. I'll give you an example. When I drive to work in the morning, I usually leave at around 6.20 a.m. And when I arrive at school, it's about 6.54. So it takes me precisely 34 minutes to get to school. Now the distance that I have to travel is 20.4 miles. If I do the equation using V bar equals D over T, 20.4 miles divided by 33.75 minutes, which reduces to 9 of an hour, that means that my average speed is 36.3 miles per hour. But that doesn't necessarily mean that at exactly 6.31 a.m. that I'm traveling at 36.3 miles per hour, does it? Okay because this only calculates my average. If I wanted to get a better idea of what's known as my instantaneous speed, it would be necessary for me to use a smaller sample of distance and time. For example, at exactly 631 and 00 seconds, I could have been traveling um, 5.110 miles from my house. Five seconds later, I might be 5.186 miles from my house. Now if we do this calculation, this time using the delta D and delta T, you'll see that my average speed over this 5 second interval, which is 1.39 times 10 to the negative third hours, is 54.7 miles per hour. But again, that's not even exactly my instantaneous speed because that's over a 5 second interval. If I really wanted to get exactly how fast I was going at any particular instant in time, I would have to shrink my position and my time samples down to an infinitesimally small amount. In other words, I would be taking a limit. And now we'd be entering the realms of calculus. Okay, We're not going to get into that, but just understand that when you're calculating your average speed, it's your average over a certain time interval.